First, we take a look at West Virginia's energy industry. In Grant County, construction has already begun on the Trans-Allegheny Interstate Line, or TRAIL. When completed, it will run from southwestern Pennsylvania to Grant County, West Virginia, and eventually to a substation in Virginia. But there's another high-voltage power line in the mix, and the future of that line is less certain. The Potomac-Appalachian Transmission High Line, or PATH, would cross through 13 West Virginia counties and enter Virginia before ending at a substation in Maryland. But it's been encountering some obstacles. First, the Maryland Public Service Commission threw out the application on a technicality. Now both Virginia and West Virginia are expressing concerns about the necessity and logistics of the line. This is the area where the PATH power line is going to come in uh, to Calhoun County from Roan County uh, from, the, from the west and it will, it will generally come in um, across this hill and cross the road here and stay in forested areas uh, in Calhoun County along the tops of the ridges. PATH officials say that the line is necessary to provide the East Coast with electricity and to strengthen the grid. Anytime you strengthen the electric grid, it helps everybody. But obviously the power in this case is probably going east from west to east. Uh, that's the direction we expect most of the power to go, so the benefits in, uh, in the east is probably higher than the p benefits to the west. But the line has been met with lots of resistance in West Virginia. Opponents like Howley say the state's residents will be sacrificing a lot for a line they don't need. So West Virginians are giving up a lot in this project. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, the reasoning behind this line uh, is very shaky. If the line would actually improve the reliability of our power grid, would actually solve the problems that PJM interconnections engineers say it would solve, then I would support the line. But it simply doesn't. And it's certainly, when you compare it to the cost that West Virginians are giving up in terms of both their electric rates and their land, um, it's simply not worth it. It's a bad investment. Everybody agrees the line will raise West Virginians' electricity rates. Ultimately, uh, somebody has to pay for the power line, so there will be, uh, there is some effect to it, but I can't, I can't quantify or give you any specifics on that. Sorry. So while the cost to West Virginia consumers will be relatively low, the power companies say uh, 50 to 60 cents a month for the average user, uh, West Virginians will also, under that same federal scheme, be paying for uh, a power line that has already been approved, the trail line. Um, and uh, two other power lines, one in Maryland and one in New Jersey, which will have nothing to do with West Virginia. The West Virginia Public Service Commission still is not convinced the state needs PATH. The power companies say they may try to bypass the states and go straight to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for approval. PATH will link up to a coal-fired power plant like this one. But with climate change legislation on the table, these plants are worried about their future. Here, in the tiny town of New Haven in Mason County, the Mountaineer power plant is debuting its carbon capture and sequestration technology. Other projects have either captured or sequestered carbon dioxide, but this is the first coal-fired power plant to do both. As far as AEP is concerned, uh, future legislation will probably require not only capture but storage of that CO2 as we capture it. So AEP has been working with Austin on this process, not only to capture the CO2 as we make it, but to also simultaneously store it in the deep underground aquifers. And that's at the elevation of here, the two wells we have to inject is 8,500 feet and 7,500 feet. France's Alstom Power is one of several industry leaders partnering with American Electric Power for the project. Their carbon capture process uses an ammonia-chilled solution to help absorb the carbon dioxide. The solution is pressurized and heated. It is then compressed and piped deep underground where it becomes a liquid. So what we've done in the UK, spurred on by uh, this sense of purpose, is that we have, um, the government has run a competition uh, for up to four commercial scale CCS projects at electricity generating stations and we're talking to companies at the moment and the idea is that we'll run these projects 
and we aim to prove the technology as quickly as possible and we have legislation in place which says that already any new power station built in the UK from this year onwards has to have within the design the capacity to retrofit CCS and as soon as the technology is proven every new power station from this year within five years will have to have retrofitted CCS so we're really keen to get on with this because one more time the Mountaineer State is leading this country with a technological advancement to see to it that coal, the most important fuel really in the world for the production of electricity, will continue to have a very, very bright future. The pilot project, referred to as CCS, will bury 1.5 percent of the plant's emissions more than one mile underground. Environmentalists question whether the carbon will remain trapped underground and whether it will be economically viable on a large scale. The process is expensive. Well, the electrical infrastructure that exists today has been built over the last hundred years. So there's a lot of investment in power generation facilities and transmission facilities of what exists today for the power that people use. And to change that technology over to something different or to add new modern additions to the present technology is going to cost dollars and it's going to cost millions of dollars so you can't spend all this money for environmental improvements upgrades and come out with a cheaper product someone ultimately in the end has to pay there is no free lunch we have to pay for what we want there, there are people who are worried about CCS and they are worried about the costs and there's no doubt about it, the costs, at least to begin with at the moment, the costs look very high. Now they may come down in the future at some point, but at the moment they are high. But uh, we would say that the costs of not tackling CCS and getting on top of the technology and doing this on a commercial scale are far worse because those are the costs that come with out of control climate change um, or they are the costs you have to face where you can no longer use coal and both of those are much worse than the extra costs involved in uh, running CCS. AEP has asked for more than $300 million in federal stimulus funds to continue the project on a commercial scale. Though Mountaineer's project focuses on carbon dioxide, CO2 is just one of the many invisible pollutants in West Virginia's air. Next, Emily Corio takes a look at some of the others and the impact these have on West Virginians' health. For West Virginia Public Broadcasting, I'm Erica Peterson in Charleston.